God has great plans for you. Just to step outside of your comfort zone. We're so glad that you're with us here on Hope Today. I'm Anna Schmidt and I'm here with Tom Hollis and we're gonna be taking some leaps today, Tom. Yeah, I don't know about stepping outside of our comfort zone. We're gonna be leaping outside of our comfort zone. You, you know, you heard the old saying, look before you leap, you know, and that's a really wisdom, right? We should look before we leap, but leaping, you know, it's a scary thing. So how do we leap in serving God? Well, Rachel G. Scott is gonna be with us and she has written a great book, Taking the Five Leaps. And we're gonna be talking about some biblical characters, what they did to take leaps, and you're gonna find out about maybe what leap God's asking you to take. It's gonna be a great discussion. Yes, truly, God always has big, exciting plans for us and he requires us to trust him. And so as you spend the next 30 minutes with us, you will learn the five types of leaps that we can take to propel ourselves into fulfilling God's destiny for our lives. Find out how you can surrender your fears and become confident when you pursue a leap. And then we're also going to talk about God's specific plan that he has for you. I think that fear thing and leaping is probably probably go together, you know. Yeah, I think I feel like sometimes we tiptoe and we just like put on. You ever get like close to like a, a high place? I don't. I'm necessarily not loving the heights there and, uh -huh. and the leap that I, I'm. Well, I do, don't usually take a leap off of there. Uh, right. <laughs> but spiritually, we take leaps, and uh, you know, without faith and direction, fear and uncertainty, they can hold us back from experiencing everything that God desires for our lives. So how exactly? Do we discover our calling and how do we go about fulfilling it? Well, our next guest says that by taking leaps, by, uh, that we do that by taking leaps. And Bible teacher and author Rachel G. Scott has written a new book that I just mentioned, Taking the Five Leaps, Experiencing God's Faithfulness as You Respond to His Call. Rachel, welcome to Hope Today. So much for having me. I'm so honored to be here with you. So let me talk to you a little bit about that word leap, okay? We, I don't think we like to take leaps. Why is it a leap? And why, why did God lead you to that word for the title? I think it's just what you said. We don't like to do it, but it's a necessary part of our life. It's really going beyond just going step by step, but knowing that it's going to feel big. And so when I think of the word leap, I think of something that's bigger than what we're probably comfortable with, but necessary for God to be able to use us in an amazing way. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to find out about the, what the five leaps are. I love the subtitle of your book, though, uh, because it says experiencing God's faithfulness. What is it about God's faithfulness that matters so much when we respond to his call? You know, as I was just writing this book, I realized that real, recognizing that God is faithful, that he is going to be there with me every step of the way, that he is not going to leave us, that he is not going to forsake us, is what helps us to make the leap, to, to boldly step into what he called us to do, going back on the history of what he's done in our life and saying, you've been faithful in this situation and in that, and you'll be faithful with me in the future. Yeah, I'm an old Star Trek fan. You know, they boldly go where no man has gone before. Yes. <laughs> and, and, but that's, that's, you know, uh, it's funny. People do that in a secular sense, don't they? Or in, a, in, a, in just a, uh, what we think of as a, maybe a non-Christian uh, segment of society, they'll take a leap. Uh, but you talk about the, the people that have taken leaps. Let me ask you first, uh, where has God taken you through a leap. Well, there was a season where both my husband and I took a leap together. So we have a blended family ministry called Better Than Blended. And we felt like God was leading us to start that, I want to say back in 2016. And uh, my husband felt like it was time for him to step out to care for our, our youngest son, but also to just go into this ministry full time. So he took the leap first, but then shortly after that, I knew that God was telling me to partner with him in taking the leap as well. So we both took that leap and it was terrifying. I didn't know what we were doing. And we asked all the questions that I talk about that in the book. But when I look back at that season of our lives, uh, my husband essentially was taking what we'll talk about as a builder's leap. And I was taking more of a fisherman's leap. And when I look back, I'm like, Lord, you were there the whole time. You were guiding us. The things that I'm doing today, this message that's been birthed, the ministry that I started, all began when we said yes to taking that leap. 
Yeah, God is a pretty faithful guy, isn't he? I mean, when he says, I will be with you always, he really means it. He's always with us. So let's yes. talk about a couple of those leaps. Uh, the first two that you mentioned uh, are the, uh, in the book are the fisherman's leap and the shepherd's leap. And you talk about Peter and Abraham. Maybe you could break those down for us. Yeah, so the fisherman's leap is the one that we are all most familiar with. And that's when God called you to completely leave your career and step into your calling. So that's the one that I think we get terrified, we get nervous. We, we're wondering, is this what God is telling me to do? That's what my husband and I did. But then the shepherd's leap is a relocation. So that's based on the story of Abraham. And it is when God called you to relocate. And I say he's giving you new territory for his glory. He's asking you to just pack up your things and move. Still, still terrifying, but we get to go back on his faithfulness and know that he's walking with us. You know, well, that, that first one, that, that fisherman's leap, you know why that's scary is because the paycheck's gone. All of a sudden, you know, and, and that, we're, we're <laughs> dependent on that paycheck every other week, you know, to come in and pay the bills. You know, some people, you know, I, I did that when I went into ministry. I did that and people were almost, almost thought I was irresponsible in some uh, circles because of that. Yes. How do we get past that whole idea of depending on that, that paycheck versus depending on God? I know we have to do it in both mm -hmm. ways, but how do, how do we get past that? Well, we want to realize that God is the source. Yes. The paycheck is the resource that he is using, but ultimately he's the source. So if the source is telling us, I want to provide for you through a different resource, then we just have to know that he is going to provide. But you're spot on when you say the paycheck and, uh, and, and the uncertainty there, that is where a lot of the fear of the unknown really steps in and it hinders us from taking that leap. So Rachel, let's dig into that topic of fear because anytime we're taking a leap outside of our comfort zone, fear is right there. How do we surrender that and trust God? You know, I say in the book that fear is a foe. It is not a friend. And often we partner with fear as if it is supposed to go alongside with us and join with us in every decision that we make. But we want to recognize what we are afraid of. What is it that is really hindering us? And often it is fear of the unknown. We're, we're afraid of what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, if God is going to be faithful. And so I would encourage you to just begin to look at that and apply truth to it. Apply the truth of who God is in his nature where fear is trying to rule. You know, you mentioned the builder's leap uh, in the book. And you mentioned a, a character I think a lot of us are attracted to in Nehemiah. And here he is right next to the king. Uh, you know, and he leaves that. He leaves that uh, and, and to go do something else. Could you unpack that, that leap for us? Yeah, so Nehemiah is one of my favorite biblical characters. My I Can't Come Down ministry is birthed out of his story. But that is when you essentially, you leave your career temporarily, that's the key, to go into your calling, but then you go back to the career. And that's what we see with uh, Nehemiah. He temporarily left that career and he went to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, but then he went back. So I, oftentimes I think that we believe we're, we're being called to make a fisherman's leap when he's actually asking us to make a builder's leap. That that he wants us to build something during that time to establish something and then we go back to the career that we were in. And so when we take these risks and we step out or leap out, how I feel like a question is how do we know this is what God is calling us to? How do we hear his voice and discern our calling? That is a great question and one I often get. And this is what I would say. The Bible says that his sheep know his voice. And when it's something that feels risky, we start to question whether we know his voice. But I just want to encourage you that you know his voice. And so you'll oftentimes it begins by these, this, these little nudges that we get. We'll get a little nudge or a sense that we're supposed to do something that takes us out of our comfort zone, but it really partners with heaven and it partners with God's vision for what he wants to do on this earth. So it starts with that nudge. And then he will begin to bring people alongside us to partner with it as well. So it's never that we're leaping alone. It's always God is it's, it's God and he'll bring his other people to partner with us. But I would say to just be encouraged that you do hear God's voice and he will confirm everything that he's asking you to do. 
You know, I, I, I think that it is a leap and sometimes we don't know. It's kind of the scary ragged edge of faith, isn't it? <laughs> that yes, we, absolutely. <laughs> that we go out there, but uh, it, that seems to be the way everyone is called is they, they, they tend to wonder and then they, they feel strong in the promises of God. I want to get to Jesus here. I don't want to, I don't want to miss uh, the trailblazers leap and you use Jesus as the example there. So. Could you uh, explain what is special? Because there's something special about that trailblazer. I, I've never really felt like I was that guy, but I, I love following a trailblazer. What is so great about uh, a trailblazer and how is Jesus an example of that? You know, a trailblazer is a person who has gone before us in something, who has already done it. And when we look at the life of Jesus and we look at the four leaps, he has already done every single one of those leaps. When he went from heaven to earth, when he had his season, when he was a, a carpenter and, you know, he began his ministry and then he went into full time ministry, but then he returned to heaven. We see that he did all of it. And so what I encourage people is, number one, as a trailblazer, you get to be a model. You get to disciple what it looks like to take all of these leaps and to partner with other people and to mentor them uh, along the way. But the other thing as a trailblazer is that you understand that we are called to live a leaping lifestyle, that the last leap that you made is not the last leap that you're going to take. And you can now look back on his faithfulness and you can respond to the call that he has given you no matter what season it is, because you understand that this is the life I've been called to live. And you know, in all of this conversation of leaping, there's a lot of action. It's very action oriented, but I love that you balance it out too, that you talk about how there are seasons of rest and in that rest time is a chance for us to trust God for what he has ahead. Can you unpack that a little? Yes. So, you know, I think rest for us is just really hard to wrap our minds around because we're always going, going, going. And if you're like me, you want to always do what God is calling you to do. And so you're like, whatever it takes, you know, I, I want to get there. But I do know that God has embedded rest into our lives on purpose. Like he has embedded the Sabbath into our lives and it's the Sabbath is for us. It, it, God created that as part of a system so that we are able to know that we are not machines. We need to rest. And so rest really looks like taking that time, pausing the work that we're doing, even if it is for God. When they were building the temple, when they were building the tabernacle, the tabernacle, they continue to rest. They continue to take that Sabbath. So even when it is work that we're doing for God, he wants us to rest and reflect on what he's doing and leave room for him to do his part. That, re that, that rest that we take allows him to do his part and partner with us as well. So it's that reminder that we are not doing this alone, that it is a partnership with heaven, it's a partnership with what he wants to do, and that we want to rest so that we can be revived and refreshed and continue to do good work. Rachel, sometimes it's not rest though. Sometimes it seems like delay, hurdles. I've been in this season, I can't tell you how many times where I'll be, I'll be like, okay, Lord, what were we doing exactly? Where, why, why am I driving a truck? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing yes. that? Wasn't I supposed to be a minister of the gospel? You know, those kind of things, they certainly are there. They come up in our lives. What do we do during those times? Nothing is wasted. Let me start by saying that nothing is wasted. Every season God can use for his glory. But I would encourage you to, to figure out, is this a hurdle or is this a barrier? So a barrier often is there to stop us. It, it, it is something that is, it hinders us from going forward. But a hurdle just means that we need to strategize differently. It means that there's been something placed in front of us, but we might need to jump over it. Now, I was never a hurdler, but I do, my son does track and I get to watch the hurdlers and they, they have to run differently. They have to pace themselves differently. They have to jump over things differently, but it does not stop them from hitting the finish line. And so I want you to just take the time and say, is this a barrier? Is this supposed to just stop me? It's, and, and maybe I need to turn around and, and God has something else for me, or is this a hurdle? And I just need to strategize differently how to move forward. So I want to hear a little bit of your personal story because you and your husband have seven children. It's a beautifully blended family. And so how has that and that ministry there as a family, where have there been leaps for you? Well, this is the, the whole ministry started off as a leap. We both grew up in blended families. So my husband had a blended family as well. Um, he had a stepmother. And so we, we had all the dynamics of blending. And I knew that when my husband and I became a blended family that I wanted us to experience a few things differently. Like I didn't have holidays and birthdays with all of my siblings still having to this day. 
And I knew that that's not what I wanted for our children. So we just began to, to develop this blended family ministry that would really support families as they were coming together to be intentional with it. And along the way, God just began to do amazing things in our lives, birthing the I Can't Come Down ministry, birthing the book that he placed in me. All of those things came as part of that. And so my husband and I are really big on just being together as a couple, the importance of understanding how to blend as a couple first, and then bringing the children into the dynamic and helping them to navigate the, the components of blending. And, you know, once we started that ministry, I think that it helped us to be more intentional um, as our children came together and as we came together as well to say, look, we are gonna make sure that God is at the center of this family, even if it's a blended family and everything else that we do and everything that's connected to that, we wanna be intentional with making sure he is at the center and that's what we've done. Rachel, in our last uh, few moments together here in our discussion, what would you say to someone who's watching who says, I don't know where, where I'm supposed to go, or maybe I, I kind of feel a prompting. What would your encouragement be to someone to take a leap? I would tell them God can do more with your willingness than he could ever do with your worthiness. So if you are willing to respond to God's call, he will meet you right where you are at. And the rest, you all will make a beautiful story together for his glory. I love that. I love that. And say that again. He's more uh, for your will. Want your willingness more. Say it again. Yes. Uh, yeah. God can do more with your willingness than he could ever do with your worthiness. Yes. Yes. Our willingness, our availability is the number one thing, isn't it? Well, Rachel, yes. thank you so much. Rachel Scott taking the five leaps, experiencing God's faithfulness as you respond to his call. Very great book. Very good uh, teaching in it. Uh, thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Well, don't go anywhere. When we return in 60 seconds, we're going to look at a familiar scripture that is proof that God has a specific plan for each and every one of us. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Oh, we're so glad that you're with us on Hope Today. It's an exciting time because if you just saw that spot all about Tom's book, we have you, Tom. This is the first time I've actually held a copy in my hand. How about that? Uh, this is the proof copy, so we got to look it over and everything. But uh, uh, it looks pretty good, Anna. It's so it looks exciting. Like the best book ever written. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it looks good though. I mean, uh, seriously, walking through the Book of Acts, uh, I love the Book of Acts, and I'm so glad to be able to have this devotional where we're going through the Book of Acts because it is kind of the book that's still going on. We're still in the book of Acts. You know, yeah. we're in that time of bringing the gospel to the whole world. And, uh, you know, uh, again, I hope you uh, get your copy of uh, Spirit Walk because yeah. it'll and help you, know you out. And you know what, this really ties right into the topic today yeah. too of these leaps of faith to, to leap into our calling. And writing has been one of God's callings for you. But for each one of us, as we have our calling, we need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And as, as you have generously given to the ministry of Cornerstone Television, we're excited to get Tom's book in your hand. It'll be coming out officially in June and yeah. it will empower you to live through the Holy Spirit. But we have a scripture that we want to share that really encourages us about God's promise. Here it is. It's from Romans 8, 28 and it says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This promise 
is one that I hold dear to my heart because all of us, we don't have to spend many years on this earth to experience a setback, some kind of detour where we had a plan where we thought God was taking us and then life threw us those curveballs, and all of a sudden we're trying to figure out what is going on. And this promise lets us know that no matter what life circumstances are, that God works all things together for your good, for his glory, because Tom, we have been called, we have been chosen by God. Yeah, you know, Anna, it's a difficult one to work through sometimes because this means that even difficulties, even bad things that happen to us, God is an amazing God. He can work those things out for good. And you say, well, how, how can this be, Tom? How could such a, a bad thing that happened to me? I know that sometimes the, the valleys that I've gone through have prepared me for the mountaintop. The, the things that uh, I've learned in the valley and I am not an easy study. I don't learn those difficult things very well. I, it takes a while for me to learn and for me to be prepared, but it, he builds within us. When we're going through those difficulties, he builds things within us so he can work that thing out to his good. Now, I don't believe that God causes evil in our lives. I don't believe he causes calamity in our lives, but he does use those things to bring us to the place where we can grow in those things and be launched. It says, and the called according to his purpose in the King James Version, and the called according to his purpose. Um, uh, that means that by his purpose, we are called into this relationship with him. But we're also called, as we were talking with Rachel, Anna, to do things in the kingdom. And we would not be able to do with it. We would not be able to identify with others that are going through hard times. We would not be able to do those things if we had not been prepared. And so God uses those. Yeah, right. And like sometimes we feel like, who am I that I've had this stuff in my past or I'm going through this hard thing. I feel so broken. But what I have found is that nobody can relate with perfect, right? So if we're out there, you're, if you're living a perfect life, nobody can relate to you. <laughs> and so when you are broken, when you share vulnerably, when you live an authentic life around others and you reflect the power of God in your life, when you reflect your faith in Christ, that you're holding on to him, trusting him for the next step, then you are an inspiration to those around you. Like if you even think of stories that have inspired you, it's those stories about overcoming. And guess what? We have an overcoming God and he lives in you. Like it's so awesome to think about whatever he has called us to, Tom, he is gonna empower us to overcome and to take those leaps forward into the next part of the calling. Yeah, and, and I think it's important, and we were talking to Rachel about this a little bit, is where do you feel called? What has God laid upon your heart? What passion has he given you? What emphasis has he given you? What problem really bugs you? I don't mean long lines at the bank. I mean, what problem in society bugs you that you, you like, you say, that's a kind of a clue to where he's put an emphasis in your heart and mind and he wants to use you to be the person to, to help uh, bring his perspective into that. So that requires that leap of faith and that requires you to step out a little bit. And you say, I don't know what to do, Tom, I'm not a minister. Well, just take that first step. Just take whatever that is. God wants to do that in your life because he's got you in a specific place. And if you weren't there, it, you know, it, nobody else is gonna do what you can do. So be that answer, be that answer to prayer. Yes, it's good to pray. Sometimes you need to be the answer to your prayers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes too, I think that we overcomplicate the calling that God has for us. Like we know that his greatest commandment is to love God and love others. And so today, what he has set before you, talk to him, uh, you know, every day before you start your day and say, God, today, with the responsibilities that you've given me, how do I love you in the work? How do I love others? Open my eyes so that I can see opportunities to show others your love. And I think about the different seasons in my adult life that God has had me in. And 
you know, in my younger years, in my 20s, starting to have kids and being able to stay home. And a lot of times the stay at home moms, we kind of feel like invisible, like we're just there to change diapers and, and you know, be a referee and be a nurse and all those things. And it goes unappreciated. But what we have before us are these eternal beings that we get the privilege of investing in their lives, the, the gospel of Christ and teaching them about love. And as you get older and you become empty nesters, like I'm almost to that stage and you have more time on your hand to be able to really volunteer and step out and do other things. That each season has something new. And now I have a blended family. Right. And so similar to Rachel, like we're being so intentional with that family time to be able to have Christ at that and nothing could be better than a mother, a father, and being that, uh, you know, that part of a person's life. How amazing is that influence? Probably greater than any other influence that we ever have in our lives. I just wanted to take a moment to say that if you're hearing all this and you say, wow, I, I, I've never been religious. I've never really gone to church or, or I used to, or I made a commitment when I was 13 or 15 or something and I, I haven't really followed up on it. I just want to say to you that God loves you and he wants to have that relationship with you. And see, the, the, that's the most important thing to recognize, that he does love you. He cares for you. He wants that relationship. But there's a barrier that we've all constructed by our own lives. We've all done things wrong. We've broken his commandments. We've sinned against him. That's, that's why Jesus came. And he took the penalty of that sin for us. He died on the cross for us. That's what the cross was. It wasn't because he was some kind of radical or something. It was because he was there to die, to give his life a ransom for many, it says in the scripture. Well, who are those many? Me and you, Anna, all of us. He gave his life for us. So have you accepted him as your savior? It's not enough to know those three things, that he loves you, that we've all messed up, but Jesus paid the penalty for that mess up. No, it's not enough to know those three things. We need to step out, take a leap. We need to take a leap today and say, be my Lord and Savior. I've sinned, For please forgive me of my sins. Come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, do that now. In fact, call our number 888-665-4483 and say, I wanna know Jesus. I want to pray to receive him as my Savior and Lord. Today, each one of us has the opportunity to be empowered by God who lives inside of us. Remember, you have been chosen. You have been called. You have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit to go out and be extraordinary for Christ today. We love you so much. Thank you for being a part of Hope Today. Have a good one. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the path to genuine joy. Pastor, speaker, and author Mike Hayes shares how Jesus' eight happy attitudes lay out a surprising and clear way to real happiness. That's what's on tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.